What's up, Internet? We are here once again in Pokemon Crystal on our quest for gritty, dark, grim, edgy revenge. The sequel. Uh, we recently got to Azalea Town, and now we have to go into the Slowpoke Well to uh, go rescue some Slowpokes or some nonsense. Um, ideally, we'll get out of the Elix Forest today because after that you get to the daycare, and I think I've mentioned this a few times, but as I understand in Crystal, you get a free egg from the daycare. So, um, it would behoove me to do that off screen because trying to catch or hatch a monster from an egg is a pain in the ass. Um, we still only have one monster, which is kind of a functional problem. But, at the same time, I know there's a couple pretty well-touted monsters you can get right around here. Now, the thing is, they're kind of a pain in the ass to catch. I mean, case in point, I've actually never caught either of them. They're a little bit rare. But, I think we can catch them. I'm a little bit nervous that it's going to take forever, but I think it's definitely doable. I'm just making sure that uh, everything appears to be cropped right, it looks like it. Sometimes I modify the uh, the um, cropping for recording other videos because nothing can just be displayed in the same aspect ratio for whatever weird reason. But, um, we could try checking out Elix Forest once we're done this to see if we can get a head start on trying to catch those monsters. I'm not sure if we actually have to functionally beat this town first. We might have to, but we're going to have to go through there anyway. Um, we're also going to have to catch an extra monster because, if I recall, we end up getting cut, and I need something to actually put cut onto. Because there's no way in hell I'm putting that on Cinder. That's just... no, that's not happening. Um, but that's really our main goal, just to get out of this town and the little forest that's next to it. But if we can grab a couple extra monsters, even though they're not monsters I'm particularly interested in, um, it would be beneficial to have more than one monster, because as it stands, we're just getting overpowered right now, which, on the front end, isn't necessarily a bad thing. It means that we can actually get past whatever they throw our way. But on the other hand, it means that uh, it's going to be harder to actually catch stuff once we get to points where we should be catching stuff. So we try to get on top of that as fast as we can, sort of. Also, I'm just noticing this, they've got different sprites for Team Rocket Grunts this time. We're already ahead of uh, the other Pokemon game that we've already played. <laughs> where everyone looked the same, in fact they made that a joke because everyone was a brother of someone else in that one tower. My doodle. Now that said, I am a little bit on the cautious side, because I know these two monsters we could potentially get in this area are both bug monsters, and I know they're pretty well touted, but I just cannot for the life of me imagine a good bug monster. That just sounds like a complete oxymoron to me. But apparently that's the case. I know they're pretty well touted, I, I've only met one or two people who've ever used them, but... Oh god, we're poisoned. Okay. This is gonna be fun. I hope I've got some kind of poison cure. It begins! I, I'm actually genuinely surprised it took like three hours to get to the first time I get poisoned in this game. Given how in the last one, every two steps I got poisoned. Okay, let's uh... Please tell me I've got ah, an antidote. Awesome. I don't want to go back right off. What have we here? Super Potion. Okay. It's a slow poke. They're slow, but they're also psychic types. Actually, that's sort of what I kind of liked about slow pokes. They were an interesting typing combination. They were psychic and water. And, I, I mean, that's one thing I really like about the idea of adding new monsters as you go through the series, is you get to see weird typing combinations. Like, later on you see a fighting and psychic type, which seems like the antithesis of itself, but it kind of sort of works, and it's interesting to see how they function. In fact, I, I was curious at one point, I wanted to look and see if there was any monster that was 
completely unaffected by like super effective attacks and there's been a couple but for the most part one of them that really interested me was it was just a single element I think it was just a pure electric type but it had a special ability that made it immune to um, like uh, earth attacks ground attacks and that somehow just made it completely invulnerable to like uh, super effective attacks which I think is a functionally interesting way to like uh, set up monsters and I, I do quite like the fact that every generation seems to have new monsters and new ways to approach monsters now that said well one of my biggest problems with gen 1 Pokemon was the fact that there just wasn't really enough of anything and it got really really boring like I said in my review of it this game has sort of a or the series has sort of a pendulum effect problem where you can fix that problem by adding more monsters, adding more types, adding more combinations and stuff. But the moment you do that, you automatically, like, take away from the ease of being able to play and the simplicity of understanding. Like, in the first game, it was a very simple rock, paper, scissors system with only a few types not really making easy to understand logical sense as to how to beat them. And once you start adding, like, a million and one other types, it gets really, really tricky to figure out. Like, I still can't figure out what Dark is good against or weak against, because it always seems to be weak against everything. Same with Steel type, um... I have no idea what Fairy type is good against. Like, they just keep adding so many types and it gets... overly convoluted. But ironically, that's... how you solve the problem that I had with the original game series, which is, I think, a functionally fascinating thing right there it's an interesting way to look into game development but uh, yeah this guy he makes pokeballs for you from your uh, from your uh, acorns you collect around his house and over the world and each colored acorn has a different effect when you turn it into a pokeball it, it's genuinely cool the problem is you can only make one at a time and it takes a day in between to actually like uh, make them so we'll give him the apricorn we collected yesterday or last week and then within 24 hours of the in-game timer he will have finished it which basically means like next week and by that point we probably won't be around here anymore I would hope um, <laughs> if that happens we've really screwed up somewhere along the lines okay um let's see if we can go into the forest because that's where we need to get a thing to catch some monsters and if we can we'll skip ahead do that then do the gym then beat the forest i think is the plan now that said this is gonna if we can do this like if we can't do this now or if we do it later either way it's gonna be kind of a bunch of busy work because it's kind of a random crap shoot uh Oh, that would be really useful. Charcoal. Powers up fire moves. Oh, I want that. Okay. Um, what can we sell? Because I want that. Actually, I think there's someone who actually gives you charcoal. How many Pokeballs do I have? I probably have enough. Okay. I, I, I'm being all over the place, I know. <laughs> Indecision! It's, it's a magic power of mine. Oh, it's this jerk. Yes, I kicked their asses, jerk. Okay, now, here we have the slight problem of I still only have one monster. <laughs> He's got three. <laughs> this could end really badly for us really, really quickly. <laughs> Fortunately, as we've only got one monster, he's been getting all the uh, experience, which also means he's been getting all the levels, which means we should be okay level-wise up until the fact he pulls his starter. Then things might get a little bit tricky. Hopefully not. Might happen, though. Okay, here's where things get tricky. See, I don't want to use Ember because I know he's good against it, but I've also got stabs so of kind of levels out a little, I think. And I know my other abilities are just kind of crap. Oh, that's going to be bad for me. Actually, that was about what I figured. Let's use smoke screen, see if we can just blind him. We're gonna use uh, Brock strats. 
Now, I do have some potions and super potions. So, as long as he doesn't get, like, a um, crit, we should be okay. I'm hoping. Okay. Now, if we're lucky, we should be able to just get him in a loop of missing us. Because once you take three accuracy drops, it gets really hard to hit anything. So we should be okay, as long as he doesn't get like a random lucky hit and it's a crit. If that happens... I don't know if he respawns and makes you fight him again, or if he just laughs at you calling you an idiot because you lost to him, but I don't want to find out. <laughs> To be fair though, playing with one monster is really a pulse pounding experience because you really have to understand how your one monster works and like strategies against everything and that's that's genuinely fun. Like I, I think maybe after I'm done the entire trilogy, because I would like to do um, Gen 3 Pokemon as well, um, maybe I'll try and do like a one monster run of something or something. I think that could be fun. Okay, now I'm genuinely kind of scared, so... I'll use a potion on Sin. I was hoping that would heal a little bit more. Okay, um... We might be able to burn him with Ember. I, I think Ember comes with a burn effect. Uh, I finished the Slowpoke well. And then I tried to go to the forest to get, um, headbutt, and I got jumped by Fafimon. Because we need more monsters than just Cinder, and I know there's at least a couple of really good monsters here, even though I've never used them and don't have a lot of interest in them. Just by virtue of the fact I've got nothing else to work with! Okay. Ha! Alright, that was a little dicey, but we came out on top. Bellsprout, 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 Zubat. <laughs> I kind of like that animation on his mouth. <laughs> I can open my mouth super big, you could fit a basketball in. Don't believe me? Look! Ah! <laughs> uh, Zubats, you're so dumb. Okay. Now hopefully we can get headbutt and I... I think I can actually teach that to Cinder, so we'll probably replace Tackle with that. It's not that your monsters were useless, it's that I'm filled with a burning vengeance that will power all my escapades from here on out. <laughs> Yet you lost to one guy who has type weakness about you and barely beat you. You think you're edgy? I was wiped off the- oh wait, so were you. Although you might not remember, I'm not sure. I think this person actually gives you uh, charcoal, maybe. There's someone around here that gives you charcoal, I don't think you have to actually buy it. Weedle. You're gonna poison me, aren't you, you stupid little worm? There's also a particular reason we want to try and get uh, these monsters with headbutt as soon as we can, and that is, um, you can get them later, but the problem is regardless of where you go in the game to get them, they will be at a flat level 10 as I understand it. I think this guy might give you the TM we need, and then we're just going to start headbutting trees. Because that's what we need to do to get rare bugs. I hate bug types, but I'm so... That's kind of my situation. I'm in such dire straits for anything. The far-fetched. Uh, you're not the guy who gives me the thing I need. Crap. Uh, I'm gonna have to beat the gym to get the thing, aren't I? Crap. Alrighty, well, that's gonna be a bit of a detour. But, on the bright side, it means I don't have to try and go through a bug gym with bug monsters, so... Bright side, I guess? On the other hand, it means Cinder's probably gonna hit level 30 by the end of this.
and then it runs away and you have to trap it. Now, if I recall, you just have to get it to go to one specific spot. I can't remember where, though. But you basically chase the thing into a circle until it gets trapped. Metapod with its big triangle nose. Looking down on us like he's too good for us. And yet he's the one who's burnt to ash. Random encounter! I always kind of liked Kakuna's design. Back on the Game Boy, it looked like it had, like, scythes for hands. I guess I could run from all these fights. I don't need the experience, but... I, I feel like I, I'm obligated to try and actually kill everything I run into right now just by virtue of I only have one monster. Okay. Let's try chasing it this way, because I know we have to trap it somewhere, I just can't remember where specifically. It might be here. Okay, Metapod. You're too pointy, get out of here. Go get a nose job. I always thought it was funny that, uh... Plastic surgery for noses is called rhinoplasty. Like, that just seems fundamentally, like, offensive. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but I, I was thinking the same thing about, um... Fear of long words. There's, like, a, a special word for it, and it's, like, 32 letters long or something like that. It's, like, insanely long. It's like, why would you do that <laughs> to the person who's suffering from that <laughs> exact thing? That's like describing a fear of heights as taking the person who's afraid of heights and shoving them on top of like a giant glass bridge over a cliff. I mean, just why would you do that? Okay, um, I'm not sure that's what we wanted to do. You know, we gotta chase this guy back, but where do we chase him? Okay, well, we check from the left. If we check from beneath, he'll go up. So, I don't think we want him to go this way, so we'll block him off here, he should go, or he'll go down, we wanted him to go up I think, but I guess we'll figure this out as we go. Now bear in mind, the only thing we get from doing this is cut and we can't use it yet, so... We're kind of doing things a little out of order just because I wanted to get headbutt. Just because I wanted to get some more monsters. Because I desperately need them! Uh. Go up. Alright. Now, I think if we talk to him from the northern direction, he goes to the right. If we talk to him from the right, he goes down. I think. We're gonna run just because. Go down. Down, 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 down. Okay, that was the opposite of what we wanted. So we're gonna have to go around. <sighs> you know, I am envious of the Pokemon manga at this point because the protagonist had a skateboard. <laughs> that he would later turn into like a um, scooter. There we go, that's the way we want you to go. But he had a faster mode of transportation at this point, whereas we're literally just stuck with walking until we get a bike. Alright. Ooh, Paris. Because you don't have a badge. Now you get cut. 
Hooray! Except I can't do anything about it, so I gotta go back. Uh, we're gonna go back and forth between this town and this forest for a while, I think. This is gonna be like the, um, Mount Moon all over again. Just, like, two hours of sadness. <laughs> but without the awesome magical musical stylings and clutch skills of the legendary J Jiggle Jim. I was gonna call him Juggle Jim, it's Jiggle Jim. Yes. I guess we'll go buy that uh, charcoal now, because... I thought the lady in the check stop gave you a free charcoal, but apparently not. And I want to make Cinder's fire attacks do like 25% more damage, so we're gonna do that. It's kinda nice you can buy multiple charcoals if you're like a big fire monster user. Oh, don't want the poker gear, want the pack. Items. Do, 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 do. Do 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 Charcoal, here we go. Give to Sin. So, the leader of the next gym is named Bugsy. You'll never know, you'll never be able to guess what uh, type she uses. I think it's a she. But, uh, I'll give you a hint. It's Bugs. And I happen to be using a fire type, so this is gonna get kind of... Well, let's not beat around the bush. I'm gonna burn this entire place to the ground. <laughs> ah, double battles before double battles were a thing. Spinarak's an interesting monster. I've never gotten one, though. But I also had Pokemon Silver back in the day, so... I had Lady Ba, which was a less interesting monster. I was kind of interested in uh, Spinarak, actually. That said, if we get the two monsters I'm kind of eyeing in this general area, we we'll already have two bugs on our team. Getting a third seems like a bad idea. See, that's just so much lamer than Spinarak. Plus, I think Spinarak actually learns some cool, like, poison attacks and stuff, whereas Ladybug, I think, just kind of gets, like, flying attacks, but they're garbage. I don't think I have to fight the other one. I think it's just, yeah. And that's where double battles originated from. I think that's the first iteration in the entire series, even though it wasn't technically a double battle. Okay, bug catcher. Ow. Ah, uh, but your bugs have one critical flaw. They're very, very flammable. Now burn to oblivion. <laughs> Uh, and that's why you pick a fire type. You don't have to take shit from bug users. And they're so crappy, so when you have to do take shit from them, it's just embarrassing. Alright, so, Weedle's down. Oh god, we are gonna be like level 30 by the end of this. This is sad, and I still don't have a level, or a second monster. Oh well. Hello. Fight me. I mean, I could avoid some of these fights, but free experience and money, I don't see why I wouldn't take that. You're weaker than the last guy. He had, like, level 12s. You're still flammable. I wonder if I'm gonna have enough, uh, embers by the end of this. That'd be a little embarrassing. Ah, I'm gonna fight you, boss. I'm gonna defeat you in one hit. I'm out of ember. That's a problem. Still, I've got levels, so it shouldn't really be too much of a problem. Oh, that's cool animation, actually. I always liked Beedrill. I mean, it's a bug monster, so it's basically useless, but I kind of like Beedrill. Way cooler than, uh, Beautifly, or Beautifly, Butterfree. Even though I think Butterfree is functionally more useful, because it learns, like, Poison Powder and stuff. It has value as a support type, but... Beedrill doesn't have much, I guess. Yes, I saved the Slowpokes! 
If you were a smart person, you'd be using one right now against my fire type, but you're not because you're a bug catcher. Josh. Although I do like Paris, it's an underutilized uh, bug monster. I still have to find something I can use cut too. This is gonna be, huh? This is uh, this is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna be catching a bunch of monsters I don't really want, but I'm gonna need. Uh, there's not one up here. Okay, and now we're gonna go fight Bugsy because we have to. Because she's an obstacle and I'm angsty. And as Shampoo had once so eloquently put, obstacles are meant for killing. And she is clearly an obstacle in our path to become the revenger that will end the life of the person who ended my life. That jerk. I don't even know what he did with my monsters. He probably scattered them to the cosmic wind too. Uh... He's gonna regret that. For my burning rage knows no bounds. Scyther's always been one of those few bug monsters I've always really liked, but it's a bug monster, it's not very good. Never got its evolution, but that's because it required an item and a trade. So I've never actually gotten a fully evolved um, Scyzor, Scizor, however you're supposed to pronounce that. Now, the first time I played this game, I had Chikorita, and if I recall, that Scyther was actually really genuinely scary. <laughs> but, I think that's actually, like, the thing you have to worry about from her is her Scyther. And, you know, that was very, very unimpressive. Done. Hooray! I got another badge. Now monsters will believe in me and obey me or some nonsense. I won't be like that guy with his messed up far fetched. Now it's mostly only a problem if you trade, but I don't trade because I can't and also I have no one to trade with. Fury Cutter. That seems like a functionally interesting move to me. I don't think, uh... Sin can learn it. I'm not sure I'd want Sin to learn it either. Oh, huh. yep, he can. But again, I'm not really sure how I want to build these monsters just yet, or even what I'm doing. Because again, I'm trying to get bug monsters right now just so I can have something. So right now, I'm not sure we're going to be going after um, that, but uh, now we're in Elix Force. This is the, the next obstacle we have to overcome, but we need Cut to get that. And while we do have Cut, we don't have a monster that can use it. That has it equipped. I'm not giving it to Cinder. <laughs> Fundamentally, I refuse to do that. I think we're still in that time where Fly and Surf Revival attacks, but... I don't think Metapod can learn cut, so we'll leave you alone. I think Paris can, though, so we'll just wander around until Paris attacks us, I guess. And I'm sure Paris is one of those, like, 5% uh, monsters that shows up. It'd probably actually be easier if we just left and uh, wandered the grass outside of Azalea Town. I'm not sure what out there can learn it. I think um, Beedrill might be able to learn it, and by extension, Kakuna, but I'm not really going to bother with that, figuring that out. See, the frustrating thing is, I know if you show up at night in-game, you can run into a monster that'll definitely learn it. So, I guess... Um, for lack of a better plan, we'll back up, go... Free Azalea Town, wander the grass out there and find something that can learn it. Because I don't have a lot of Pokeballs to spam on random stuff, hoping we run into something that can uh, 
learn cut. But I'm sure something pre Azalea can learn it. I think there's Bell Sprouts out there which can learn it. I would hope they can learn it, or else we're going back to New Bark Town trying to catch a Centret or something dumb. Oh, that would be depressing. Alrighty. I think Rattata learns cut. Okay, now because I'm scared of, like, instantly killing you, I'm just gonna throw a Pokeball at you and see what happens. <laughs> Stupid Rattata. Look, if I pull out my weakest attacks on you, you will die instantly. Just get caught, damn it. I don't even want you. You can leave after I'm done cutting you. <laughs> or getting you to cut things, I guess. Or both, you're kind of pissing me off. You vermin. <laughs> this is just sort of comical. This low-level monster just does not want to be cut. I mean, I guess I have Great Balls, but I don't want to use them on a Rattata. I'm gonna have to go buy more Pokeballs just to catch these other monsters. Alright, there we go. Yes. Hmm. Because it's true, damn it. <laughs> and if you can't learn cut, I'm gonna be really kinda upset about that. I hate life. <laughs> Ugh. This is just depressing. Okay. I need more Pokeballs. This is just gonna be like the quest of stupidity right now. I will take as many as I can buy. Twelve. Super. Right, now, the proud owner of, like, the single most useless monster ever. Hooray. I'm kind of surprised Rattata doesn't learn cut. That's just weird. I mean, he's got those big teeth. You'd think you'd be able to use that to cut something. Cut this tree down with your stupid buck teeth. Oh, a hop-hip. Hmm. I feel like we could use a hop hip as well, so I might catch it and just keep it for, uh... Just having a different type on our side. Oh, that said, if we're gathering all these monsters and they're gonna be so low level, I might have to, uh... Do some grinding or something, that's less than ideal. I've actually never gotten a uh, Hop Hips final form. I shall name you. Slad. Out of curiosity, can Salad learn? Cut. Nope. Alright, well, we at least have a monster that we can gain some levels with or something. Pointless grinding! Hooray! No, wait, the other thing. Boo! Splash! Synthesis and Tail Whip. <laughs> God, these are the most useless monsters I have ever seen. This is just sad.
And Salad's gonna very quickly turn to the dope fish of the series. It even knows Splash already. Oh, uh, this is gonna turn to... I might as well go back to Elix Force and just go fight some random nonsense and hope I run into a uh, stupid Paris and hope that killer of cut. Why can nothing learn cut? This is just depressing. <laughs> I mean, I get it, no one wants cut, but why is nothing learning it? Okay, so Bellsprout probably didn't show up here. I guess we're gonna go back to the forest and fight Paris. Because I clearly know what I'm doing and I'm not just wasting everyone's time. Alright, Geodude. Get rocked. Because Scorched Earth Policy. Might as well heal up Cinder while we're here. Oh, then we'll get rid of Vermin because I don't need him. Because he's useless. Deposit Vermin. Oh, I could have released him from there. Goodbye, you worthless. Uh, I was thinking about naming him Plague. <laughs> but I guess that would have been a little too on the nose. Still, I'm not really sure what I should do for a team. Like, I I know there are these bug monsters right around here that would be kind of cool to have. Because I know they're pretty well touted. And I know there's like a chance we might get a good monster if we get the right egg from the egg person. From what I've read. And I know there's like a theoretical Eevee we could try and evolve or something into one of the Johto versions. But, like, everything else doesn't show up to, like, the end of the game, so... Setting up a good team is just sort of... Weird when you're limiting yourself to Johto monsters. I'm, I'm fine with doing it, I don't mind the challenge, but I just... It's kind of annoying that it's like, ah... Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do, and when I finally have everything I need to actually do something cool, it's gonna be so late in the game that I won't be able to actually, like, get invested and do it properly. And by the end of this, it'll turn out Paris, in fact, can't learn cut. I'll have to go, like, back to the other side of the cave, get a bell sprout. <laughs> Turns out that can't learn cut either. Go back to New Bark Town, get a Centret, hope that nose cut, and then just get fed up with the whole thing and teach my starter cut and regret it throughout the rest of the game. But, on the bright side, I'll be through this damn forest. And you know, at that, at this point, you know, that's a goal for me. <laughs> now, it's gonna be depressing if we hit level 30 just by sitting here trying to find a Paris so we can teach it cut, so we can get past an arbitrary roadblock. And this is another reason why HMs are just straight up terrible. Seriously, just turn it into items, then I don't have to waste a slot on a monster for an attack that's garbage. Roasted bug. Not very appetizing, but I know it's a delicacy in some place. Oh, it almost looks like he leveled, but he didn't!
Come on. Paris. Please be a Paris. Kakona. I kind of feel bad. That's literally the only move it's got. That just means it's more insulated when it burns, though. You get a more even cooking on it. Get a nice char going. On your bug meat. Hooray. It's gonna turn into a start evolution before we get out of this crappy forest. Uh, salad will learn. Like, I, I know what it ends up evolving into, but I've never gotten one. I, I've never really pursued the monster's evolution path at all. I think I tried the first time I played, but I just kind of got impatient with it. Not doing much, and also having Splash was kind of a detractor. For obvious reasons. That Splash is terrible. But it's a good taunt, it's just not as useless as Bide. Bide is still, like, the most worthless attack in the game. I don't want items, I just want to swap to Sin. On the bright side, our egg will hatch before the episode's over. <laughs> oh, this is taking depressingly long. Like, I figured this would take a while, but... I didn't think this would actually be the thing that stops us this time. I figured, you know, it would be the whole trying to actually get the monsters around here that I kind of was thinking maybe we could use. Not just getting through the forest. I should have got that Paris when I first, uh... When I first saw it, huh? <laughs> yep. You know, that was a joke, game. You didn't have to indulge me. Hooray. It's Togepi. Uh, what should I name you? I already had a quiche. Might as well have an omelette. I don't even like eggs. Eggs are gross. As are monsters that hatch from them, evidently. Let's go, Slad. What abilities do you have? Ah, oh, so you're just as useless. That's awesome. And see, Togepi might learn Cut. But at the same time, it's one of the few monsters I have access to right now, so I feel like I shouldn't waste it yet. Even though I hate it and don't want to ever use it. I feel like I'm going to have to level it up for a while. Okay. Don't make me walk all the way back to New Bark Town. No one wants that, especially me. <laughs> I'm already bitter I can't have a Mareep. I was gonna name it Deckard, because obvious Philip K. Dick reference is obvious. But it's good to make a literary reference every now and then. Ah, why do I keep going there? See, this is annoying. We haven't even gotten to the part that I'm gonna consider tedious in this episode, which is actually trying to get those monsters from those stupid trees. This is just... dumb. And I... we could go to the well, but I think the only monsters there are Zubats, and I don't think they learn Cut. That said, you know, if Zubat could learn Cut, it would also learn Fly. That'd be a good use for HMs. 
Like, that was one thing I really, really liked about Gen 3 Pokemon, is Tropus existed, and that could learn, like, every... I, outside of, like, Surf and Dive, it could learn every HM. Why do I keep going to items? But... Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's not really a Tropus in this game, as far as I'm aware. Oh, I don't want to be poisoned. This is already depressingly taking all the time in the world. Okay, just because I think this is going to take forever anyway, we'll go get a bell sprout. That has to no cut, right? Right? Please? I don't want to have to go online and Google search, does bell sprout learn cut? I need something that can learn cut. Just so I can get past this stupid tree. The funny thing is, I don't think you ever really need to use cut ever again in this game either. I think it's literally just to get out of Elix Force and that's about it. After that it's more like just for convenience more than anything. Uh, this is going to be the Mount Moon episode all over again. I'm going to run from everything in this cave. I don't care. Screw it. I just do not care. <laughs> you don't learn cut. You're useless. And Salad can't attack you, so it's kind of useless too but it's at least something different. Stupid Zubat. But its mouth big enough to fit a freaking basketball. No one likes you, Zubat. No one will ever like you. Just stop existing. Sandrew! Ooh, that might learn cut. Also, I like Sandrew. Can't even weaken it as salad. This is sad. Also, if Sandra doesn't learn cut, I'm just gonna be so sad. Also, it's a lot more cooperative than stupid Rattata. Sandra's the man. I'm impressed. Awesome Mon, because it was nice and helpful and not like that shitty Rattata. Now, please tell me you learned Cut. Oh, thank God. Hooray! Okay, well now I feel like I need to fight stuff just for experience, but I don't want to either. Well, Salad can run, we'll uh, keep running, I guess. Genuinely surprised Sandshrews are here, I didn't think they were. That's kind of cool though, I, I always liked Sandshrews' design, and as someone who started with Pokemon Red, I was kind of jealous that we didn't get Sandshrew. So we got Ekans. And, I mean Ekans is okay, but Sandshrews is just pretty cool. Alrighty. Let's go, Salad. We have an adventure to get back on track to return back to Azalea once we learn Headbutt so we can go catch more monsters so we can actually start training stuff and get going on this adventure. That said, I mean, if we do plan on leveling our Togepi, Salad, plus the two monsters I'm kind of aiming for here, it's going to be really tricky just trying to uh, keep our levels consistent with each other because, well, we're probably going to have to uh, stop using Cinder for a while, and then we're just going to have to, like, grind or something. 
<gasps> okay. Now, going back to what was wrong with Pokemon Red, you couldn't just press A on the cut tree and have it ask you if you wanted to use cut. Here you can. Okay, this is a shrine for a thing that is completely worthless in this game, but if you had a cell phone adapter for the Game Boy Color, I think, and you lived in Japan, you could get a Celebi event. X attack, that's not what we need. We need another thing. Also, if you have the 3DS version, you can get a thing for it. That's the guy we need to talk to. Now, you're noticing these little evergreen bushes around here. These are important, and I re I did not realize before we came into this place that this place had so many of them. And it'll be important later. But we're gonna have to find a way to make this work, I guess. Basically, we're at the mercy of RNG for the next little bit. Honestly, aside from that whole, I don't have cut detour, I, I thought we were pretty ahead of schedule. And now it's like, ah, uh, we're about where I didn't want to be in terms of scheduling. Great. Okay. Got TM2, which is headbutt. Yep. Okay. Now we need this TM. Now this TM allows you to headbutt trees. It's functionally sort of like an HM, except you can uh, trade it out for anything. Um, oh, I can teach it to stuff too. Hmm. I guess we'll give it to... See, I, I want to give it to Cinder. I guess we'll give it to Cinder, just because he still has tackle and I want to get rid of that. And I'm sure there was a better plan than that, but the fact is you only need headbutt for literally two things, and we're about to try and do both tonight. Hopefully. Now, these little shrubs are what you... I'm sorry for the audio quality change, I'm just gonna sit up for just a second and grab my blanket. Um, these little shrubs can be headbutted and they'll knock Pokemon out. Now, the thing is, there's two types of trees, and... Essentially, there are trees that have good Pokemon and trees that have bad monsters. And they each have three monsters they'll drop. And the thing is, they are entirely identical in terms of look and everything. They are dictated by whatever your trainer's numbers are. And also, two of the three monsters that the good and bad trees have are shared. So really, it's until you find that third monster, you are at the mercy of RNG to figure out what tree you're at. And, um... Depending on what area you go to, ends up dictating what the good monsters are. And there's two good bon or two good bug monsters, so we're gonna try and get them. Because that's what I would like to do very much, please. Now, the first set of trees, as I understand, are in Azalea Town. So we're just gonna start headbutting trees. Now, if I recall, it's like Rattata, uh, something else. And if it's a bad tree, it'll drop an Ekans. So this is a bad tree. So we'll fight this. And you can see it's at level 10. We could go to these little, um, shaking trees at the end of the game and you'd still get level 10s. But uh, we now know we don't have to headbutt this tree again. Ugh. It begins again. I could have given headbutt to Salad, I guess. Give it something, but... There we go, Salad Learn Tackle. Awesome. I think I'm gonna swap Omelette in for Salad. And uh, try and get those two to gain some experience on each other. 
And we'll probably end up having to swap to Cinder anyway, but still. Ekans. Okay, so this is a bad tree as well. Growling Charm. Why are you so useless, Togepi? Alright, Salad. Let's see what you got. Poisoned! Oh god, it's super effective. Okay, new plan. Going to Cinder. The nice thing is we are narrowing down the trees. Now the problem is Elix Force is nothing but these shrubs. And I'm not even sure each one is... It, it, like, I'm not sure it's 50-50 chance whether it's going to be a good or a bad tree. I'm not sure if half of them are divided or how it's calculated. It could be that it's entirely theoretically possible that all trees are bad trees. And if that's the case, that's sad, but... Yes, we will headbutt this tree. And we'll keep headbutting until we get something. Because I'm pretty sure every tree has monsters in it. I don't think it's just... Nope, nothing. Okay, we'll move on. But we know those first true trees are bad. And there's some out here. So I don't know if nothing means there's no chance. I just know that there's good and bad trees. Okay, here we go. Spiro. Spiro is one of the commons between the two. And then I think the other is like um, either Weedle or Caterpie or some really dumb monster. That said, Salad might be able to actually fight Spiro, so. Or not. <laughs> Are you a bug type or something, Salad? I'm... And now Cinder's poison, so that's gonna... Ah, uh, the futility of trying to accomplish anything in life. <laughs> Alright, let's headbutt the tree again. Is it a good tree or a bad tree? Apom. Apom's the other uh, common one. So it's Apom, Spiro, and then if it's a bad tree, it's Ekans. If it's a good tree, depending on the area, it'll either be a... Um, well, I'll, I'll let that be a surprise. <laughs> Hoping we run into one. Because if we don't... <sighs> That'll have made tonight just a complete depressing... Circus of errors, perhaps is the good word for it. <laughs> Learn to move, Omelette. I don't know if I'm going to use you, but learn to move. Another thing you have to understand is, to get Omelette to evolve, it's one of those stupid affection evolutions. So if we're doing that, I might do that off screen too, just by virtue of that sucks. Like, I, I've got the same opinion of if I choose to uh, go and get a Eevee, because the Johto only Eevee evolutions are both evolutions of affection, and it's one of those things where it's like, I don't want to deal with this, it takes like a week of doing daily nonsense just to uh, get to work. Like, it's it's a great concept, but then you have to like, get an intangible concept like how much you have in terms of like, trying to quantify friendship and turn that into a gaming value. And when you do that, then it becomes less of an actual emotional thing. Ugh, great! Completely random attack! I'll be sure to probably have to use that once Cinder dies from poison. But when you try and quantify something that's intangible like that, I think it kind of becomes functionally a problematic thing. Also, nope, nothing but monster. Interesting. More Spiros! And like I said, if we did this headbutting nonsense later, we could, but the problem with that is uh, the monsters would be lower level by comparison of what we should be, and also there's only two, so if we actually intend to do it, it'd be better to do it sooner rather than later. Now, rollout's an interesting and really dirty attack because it does more damage each time it hits. Um, in fact, it's a TM you get from a gym leader, the next one, and, uh, when I ran into that gym the first time I played, it was the biggest pain in the ass. 
I lost to it so many times, and I, I attribute part of that to being the fact I used Chikorita. Which, again, don't use Chikorita. It's a vegetable. It's useless. But, nice work, Omelette. I'm actually kind of impressed. Come on. Give me a good monster! Uh, I think it's like a 30% chance whatever you get. Atkins, it's a bad tree. That was fun to find out. Let's see if Omelette can get a good metronome. Explosion! <laughs> That was a joke, Omelette! You didn't have to actually take me up on that offer. Look at Omelette! Being completely literal with all my jokes. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I just, I can't feel bad about that. Omelette just totally gets my sense of humor. I, I feel like I might have to use Omelette now just because of how it is. I'm gonna go heal up and get my monsters back, but that was... That was amazing. <laughs> oh. This omelet explodes in your mouth. It's so flavorful. It's zesty. Okay, now that said, we didn't test these trees because we just got nothing. So I guess we'll try two or three more times and see if we can get something. Because it is entirely theoretically possible that some trees are just triggered as there's no monster here. Oh, no. I guess I was wrong. So every tree has a monster. We just have to figure out if it's a good one or a bad one. I think that's doable. Let's see if Omelette can do it again. Hyper Beam! <laughs> hyper Beam, Hyper Beam. Oh, that's not a bad move. Fusion is not a bad little move. Let's see. Kinesis. Accuracy fell, huh? I don't think I've ever seen anything ever use Kinesis before. <laughs> Synthesis. I'm just gonna recover now, thank you. <laughs> I, I do kind of like the idea of doing nothing but like a run of just a monster with metronome. Oh. Well, I'm just gonna use the one move that could be literally any move at random. No big deal. The problem is I can't do anything with omelets, so if it chooses to pack... It could be a problem. If it uses Leer, we might actually be able to beat Spiro. Yes! Omelette! Being awesome. Nice. Gotta admit, I'm kind of impressed with Omelette. <laughs> Which is surprising given how much I dislike Togepi. These these Pokemon adventures, they're really changing my perspective on some things. Eevee's not entirely useless because Jolteon is awesome. <laughs> Togepi might actually be cool. Jigglypuff can save you from certain doom sometimes. <laughs> See Hyper Beam. <laughs> nope, it was the other one this time. <laughs> this is actually pretty fun, just Unfortunately, Omelette got no experience from that. I feel like I should heal Omelette up again. <laughs> At least until it gets to level 10 and matches salad. I'm kind of intrigued about using Omelette now. <laughs> Just because it just gets my sense of humor. I appreciate that. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> oh god, now we're gonna have to go through Elix Forest to try and find the other headbutt monster. We're gonna be at this for a while. 
Alright. Good tree, bad tree. Alright, well now we know. Alright, omelet. Don't be poisoned. Flamethrower. Aw, oh, that's a lame one. Also kind of redundant. I'm gonna use that move too! No, you're just taking all of his moves, Omelette. You're doing the wrong thing! I wonder if this is the... That's just a taunt. Omelette knows what he's doing. Yeah, this is sort of that point in the game where... If you're hit by an attack like Rap or Fire Blast, you're just stuck in it. You can't do much about it. I think. <laughs> Headbutt! I think this is about that point. I'm, I'm genuinely curious, but I don't want to swap out monsters to find out either. Conversion 2? That's... Huh. That's a Porygon 2 ability, I think. That's genuinely interesting. I, I don't think I've ever seen that move. Ancient power. It's quite fun just uh, messing around with Metronome, honestly. <laughs> Doesn't affect poison type or uh, steel type. And now I'm tiny. What are you gonna do? I'm harder to hit. Although I only have three more of these, this could be a problem. If his rap doesn't kill me. Come on, be something cool. Crunch. Yeah! That's how we do omelet. Uh, I'll just swap to, uh, salad. Let's test this tree out. Nothing. Except there is. Stop lying, game. There's a thing here. I want to know what thing. Now, the nice thing is, if these are split... 50-50 between good and bad trees by an area, that means that there's only so many potentials for bad trees, which means theoretically we are very quickly narrowing it down. But again, no one's ever said that it's actually properly 50-50 split. Just that it's randomized by your trainer number. Let's go salad. You do have synthesis, though. That's kind of not a bad move. Oh, right. You're, I guess, part bug or something. Guess we'll swap to Cinder. Because you're just not doing much. How are you weak to bird? You're a plant. In fact, I think you're part flying. Or you are later. Seriously, Salad. What is wrong with you? Still no news on whether this is a good or bad tree, however. Though an arborist would tell you every tree is a bad tree. And then in my experience, they probably would hire you to work for them and then never pay you. I've had bad arborist experiences. Now, I think Ipom is, like, normal fighting, or at least it learns some fighting-type attacks. But it's, not, again, not really a monster I really care for all that much. I don't think it evolves or anything. I think it evolves starting, like, Gen 4 when they decide to give everything that already existed more evolutions, but I don't think it currently evolves. 
Nor do I have really any interest in seeing if it does. Alright, so still no news on what kind of tree this is. And again, it should be a 30% chance for it to either be one common, the other common, or the exclusive monster. Because headbutting trees, it's like beating your head against a wall if the wall was made of wood. Spiro. Called it. <laughs> Come on, man. It's a 30% chance. Stop being predictable. Just give me something good and maybe don't kill Salad. I think it's about to level. Now, the really scary thing is if it is a 50 50 split, or even if it's not, I guess. Elix Forest has so many of these trees, finding one of the good ones is going to be a pain, but still. It might be worth it, just depending on what we do or don't find along the way to add to our team. Because like I said, I'm, I'm not really sure there's anything in particular we that's out there that I want to use right now. Like, I'm, I'm considering using Omelette just by virtue of I'm enjoying the comedy of it. Hell, I'm beating my head against trees, trying just to find something unique. Swap to Salad, please don't kill Salad. And then have Cinder burn you to ground. Have some roast, some kind of bird. I guess it would be a sparrow, but I don't think you'd roast them, they're too small. Alright. It's gonna be an Ekans. And I'm really just doing this because I don't know what else to add to my team at this point. And I mean, at least if we get this stuff early on, we could maybe make it viable even if we decide not to later. Nope, nothing. Oh, here we go. Spiro! I can't... <laughs> I can't feel bad about that. I did call it. I did say this was going to be an Ekans tree, and lo and behold, it's an Ekans tree. But on the bright side, this is case in point yet another reason why bug catchers are just terrible people. Because they catch bugs, they actually do this to catch bugs, so that they can train them and become crappy bug gym teachers or whatever. And then they lose to Cinder in one attack because they choose bug types. Because why would you do that ever? I'm gonna be here for like three hours. Or until like uh, the RF gets overheated and shuts down. Oh, that's a thing that could actually happen. I'm a little worried about that. In order to scan cartridges, the Retro Freaks kind of got a bad design where it'll like it, the heat sinks are facing inward so it actually does overheat after a couple hours so hopefully we actually get through all this before it overheats and I don't lose all my data that would be kind of scary and yet a very real possibility oh salad was just about to level up you jerk Spiro Alright, well, I guess we'll see if this tree is good, and I'll probably already check this tree. 
This was one of the few unique mechanics that this game brought to the table, really, though. So, I mean, if nothing else, recognize how groundbreaking it was. This and Rock Smash, which was in the same boat as a TM that functioned like an HM and allowed you to fight monsters by using it. So, if nothing else, you know, it's a learning experience of some description, maybe. And when we're done here, I'm burning this forest to the ground. Hooray, omelette leveled. Come on, Sin. Keep headbutting until we find something neat. We're probably getting Ekans. Nothing. Come on, keep doing it. What, like, like I said at the beginning of this, I'd never caught these monsters before, I never trained them up. This was part of the reason. They were hard to find and they were just kind of a pain in the ass to get. It was kind of innovative to try and use this one ability to try and, you know, make them show up, but... It was just kind of a pain in the ass to actually try and do anything to get them. Especially when there are so many actual cool monsters out there. Granted, they show up near the end of the game, but you know... There's actual, genuinely interesting monsters here, we just have to get them. Headbutt the tree. Keep headbutting the tree. Ekans. I was really hoping that was not going to be the case, Ekans. You jerk. Alright, well, you know. Burn and all that. Looks more like an earthworm than, like, a snake. Like, yeah, it's got that sort of tail rattle, but it looks more like a worm. Okay, so we got the first two over there. Noted. Let's try again. Just watch, by the end of this, we will actually get those monsters, but I will decide to never use them. Like, that's just going to be the end result of all of this time-wasting. Please be a good tree. There's only so many left, and I need a good tree. Then tell your friends in Elix Forest to be good trees, and maybe I won't burn them to the ground. I mean, no promises, but... You know, you trees are really pissing me off at this point. The fact that nothing appeared is an option is... That, that seems like a bad design choice to me. Okay, well, we know there's Spiros here. That doesn't really tell us anything, but we know that's a thing that is emphatically true about this tree. Yep, you use Lear, I'll go to Cinder, who will finish you off. Give us a roast bird. Ember. Hooray, salad leveled. Now more nutritious than ever. Yes, let's keep headbutting that tree. Nothing. Let 
Because beating your head against a wall literally for hours on end is evidently fun. Seriously, why is nothing a like viable option for headbutting? It doesn't make sense. More than one Spiro in that tree, and we all know it, game. Quit messing with me. You know what would be really depressing is if it actually took PP to use this, and, like, you'd eventually just run out. Okay, fine, tree. We'll start over at this tree. Does that make you feel better? <sighs> Evidently not. Ugh. Come on. Give me a monster, preferably a good one. Please, I gotta go do this in the forest next. Ugh. World, you're not making things easy for me. I mean, you never do, but come on. Huh, ah, omelet's behind. We'll just let omelet fight. Metronome! Twin Needle? I guess it's a bug attack, maybe? I can't think of what monster would use that ability. Well, you know, poison's effective. Sleep Power! <laughs> Come on. Pick one or the other, their omelette. There we go. Just hit it with Hyper Beam, it would be awesome if you did. <laughs> Twin Needle. I think we've established. Also, that's clearly four needles you hit it with. Maybe Paris would use that move. Encore. Oop. Okay, that could actually be really, really good for us. Okay. Well, okay, you killed it. Credit where credit's due. Good work, Omelette. Okay. Come on. Seriously, why is nothing an option here? Doesn't make any logical sense. It does nothing but serve to waste time and make you question whether or not the mechanics actually are functional. Do you want me to go back to that other tree I was headbutting and getting nothing from game? Is that what you want? Because, I mean, I'll do it. I'm equally getting nothing from you. Ugh. Trees. Yet another completely viable reason to hate bug catchers. And arborists. On top of the myriad of reasons that already exist. Fine, we'll go to this tree. Does that make you a happy game? And it secretly turns out there's a hidden mechanic that you can only headbutt trees so many times per day before it stops entirely. Ugh. Spiro. 
only have four metronomes left. That's a little not good. That's also not wildly effective. Use Toxic. That would be a good move. Or Hyper Beam. Or Flamethrower. Sharpen. That's another Porygon move, I think. Oh, I got one more. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> Fine. I'll just throw Sin back out there. I'll just burn this stupid bird and the rest of these stupid trees to the stupid ground. But no one said being the very best, like no one ever was, was easy. And in this case, it involves having your Pokemon beat their head into a wall until it just caves in from blood. They permanent cranial damage. Ugh, come on. I've literally been doing this for like an hour. You'd think this wouldn't take as long as it does, either. Like, I, I get that fighting the monsters takes time, but it's just the fact that, literally, you can run into, like, a no-win, like, uh, flag is just weird. Like, do you want us to use this mechanic or not? Because you're kind of not incentivizing us to do it, seeing as you're just making us run into common stuff or dumb stuff. I'm out of metronomes, but I can swap to Salad, who has Tackle. Which is probably not going to be wildly effective against Napalm, but... You know, it, it's a thing we could do. And you're just going to use Brock strats on us, aren't you? That's not fair. Stop doing that. Seriously. Quit it. Sand attack. Come on, Apom. Just... Okay, new plan. Because I'm impatient. Impatience! It's a virtue I possess because patience is for chumps. And people who aren't fueled by revenge. Which, as established, is what we are. Huh. Omelette leveled. Awesome. And eventually they're going to hit level 30 before we're done. <laughs> like, I mean, I could maybe understand there being like a, you can't get a monster from the same tree twice, so go to a second tree, then come back. That I could see. But to just make a non-result scenario is just baffling to me. Alright, well, let's see if we can... Uh actually get salad some attacks in this time maybe possibly and my cat's in meow you meowing at me mr cat i bet you're meowing at me you wanted to see me splash attack him uh, okay that's not effective let's throw sin out there once again Come on. Come on. 
All right. Let's fight this stupid tree again. Trees are truly the most insidious Pokemon trainers of all. You know the funny thing is, there's a bug catching competition, a special event that's held a couple times a week in a specific place that you could go to, and you could theoretically run into these same monsters, but you can't because they're exclusive to headbutting trees. That seems weird to me. There's there's just so much about these two monsters only being exclusive to beating your head against a wall for, well at this point, an hour on end and still no luck. It's just weird to me. Come on. How is nothing a result? Like... That just makes no sense to me from, like, a development perspective. Like, if you want your players to utilize your mechanics, you have to make them feel rewarded with it. It's already bad enough that there's common monsters that no one wants coming out of this, but the fact that it could theoretically be 50-50 whether the tree at all has whatever monster you're looking at it, and you need this ability, and you need to keep this ability, it all just leads to a really baffling pitch as to why this is something that's still in the game and someone just didn't say no that's stupid fix it rework the system or something but as it stands it's i mean it's here i'm trying to use it but this is the exact reason why i didn't use it back in the day and i mean yeah there's good monsters you can get from this but it's so prohibitive to even bother trying. Let's try again. Nothing. I'm sure there's something, like, dumb and simple I'm just missing about this. It's like, nope, on this day you'll never actually get a monster out of this tree or something stupid. I mean, I'm literally just beating my head against a wall here just to see if I can find something unique. I mean, at the same time, it's a great example of why this mechanic is terrible. And why, if you want these specific monsters, you're gonna basically just torture yourself, but... You know, from a functional enjoyment perspective, there's not really much here. It's just beating your head against a tree, hoping that you find something. And that's not fun. Oh, here we go. Another A-bomb. I seriously don't think I'm gonna let this go on for much longer. Like, seriously, if I'm not finding anything by the two-hour mark, I'll give myself half an hour. And if there's nothing, I will freaking leave. Because this is just depressing. It's a waste of everyone's time. Nice, nice uh, game mechanics there, Game Freak. You hit the nail on the head with this one. It's kind of sad to say that, because this game is pretty much an improvement over the original in every respect, too. But to see something like this, like, just... Forcing you to utilize it if you want... 100% this game is just baffling because it's just that bad I mean case in point I've been doing this for an hour and I still haven't found like the one monster I'm looking for in the possible pull of like six monsters I could run into here let's try again keep headbutting I want to cut this tree to the ground just keep running into it with your face, and then eventually it'll fall over, and we will have succeeded in our mission to slowly deforest this entire goddamn world. Oh, here we go. You want me to put you outside, Mr. Cat? Alright, let's put Mr. Cat outside. I'll be back in a sec.
Silly Cat wants to play games with me. But I'm trying to play games with Pokemon and stupid trees that need to be cut down desperately to make this world a better place. <sighs> and like, that's the thing, I mean, I guess I could do all of this, you know, off screen and just, you know, do this in my spare time, but at the same time, I don't want to. <laughs> like, I, and I think that's very telling of how bad a mechanic this is, is if, like, you just would prefer not to do it at all in a game of things you actually want to be doing. I don't know. And the weird thing is, they brought this mechanic back, and they took it away at the same time. Like, I, I've seen games that sort of have this mechanic, I've seen Pokemon games that have it removed. Because Pokemon's weird like that, like, every generation they add something, usually involving a new, mildly different variant of Pikachu for some reason, but... Then the following... generation completely removes that mechanic entirely. It's like they can't really commit to anything. And then they make, like, these hyper... like specialized monsters like Deoxys or uh, Rotom, which require like specific things to, you know, utilize their own abilities. And then you have to somehow write that into the next games. Somehow, and they do, which I don't think is good. And it's not like they ever actually learn a lesson from this, they keep doing it. Like, you had Arceus, and then you had, uh, you had uh, Silvely, as much as I like it. There's just so many weird, hyper-specialized monsters with special individual mechanics. And then they have to try and write that into the next game, and it's like, stop doing that! Can't you see it's terrible? And, and you cut some actually genuinely interesting mechanics, like... Um, what was a really good one? Like, the hidden bases from Gen 3 Pokemon, they weren't great or anything, but they were kind of fun and neat. If I'll really, really restrictive, and sure they were in the next game, kind of, with the underground, and then they cut the underground. There's just so many weird mechanics that they could have probably expanded upon and made into something meaningful, but just didn't. And then there's dumb ones they decide to keep that are probably should be gotten rid of because they're just terrible. And this is definitely one of those terrible ones. Hey, Palm. Spiro. The real secret to this tree is it only has these two monsters. It doesn't actually have a third one. See, this would... I, like, I don't want to say it would be tolerable, but it would be a lot closer to tolerable if they just made it so that every time you rammed your stupid monster's stupid face into the stupid tree, a monster would show up. Like, and maybe, you know, you add one more monster to the pool just to dilute finding, like, the super fun rare monsters or something. But, at least make it feel like you're accomplishing something. Like, this nope nothing message is really just pissing me off because it feels like it's just a colossal waste of time to even be trying to do this. And it's annoying because it's like, well, what else am I going to do? I'm using Togepi just because I think it's funny. I'm using Hophip even though I don't want to. I need monsters, but you're not giving me any game. I mean, on the bright side, the closer we get to the next 20 minutes, the closer we are to ending this. Completely fruitless endeavor. I still have no idea what monster I was going to use. I, like, I was kind of thinking maybe I'd use Heracross and, like, uh, Fortress, because I've never used them before. But if getting them is this obnoxious, why bother? And, I mean, even if I get one, there's still the other, which is an Elix Forest. And it, I would just be devolving back into this. And seriously, I'm, I'm having trouble finding a reason to care about this. This is just, at this point, a running joke for me. Like, 
wow, this game has this really stupid mechanic and they expected you to actually do this. Like, it's mind-blowing in its own sense. Because it's literally just me talking to a bush and not accomplishing anything. And yet, people are expected to do this if they want to actually actively complete the game, because two things are exclusive to this. Like... Why would you design a game around this? Or, or why would you design, like, an entire aspect of a game around this? And make it a required thing if you want to actually complete the game? Like, that's... Baffling to me. Like, maybe... Another alternative to this would be you could do this and the monsters would have like a higher chance of being shiny or like have a special item attached to them or something that would actually make this worthwhile, but get rid of this damn nope nothing message. Because this is just depressing. I mean, at least the music is a little bit better, but... But, uh... I don't know, this is just pissing me off, and it's annoying because, like, I have to somehow find some new monsters to add to my team, and it's not really like I want to use Omelette or Salad all that much, but they're there. These monsters I actually kind of want just because I've never used them before, and it would be functionally interesting to try them. Bad tree! Awesome! No, that's great, that's... that's... That's fantastic, see, we're learning here. And I think we're learning that it's not a 50-50 thing, because we've already gone through most of the trees in Azalea Town, which is where you, the earliest you can uh, get this guy is, as far as I'm aware. So the fact that we've already gone through more than half of them tells me that, at the very least, it's not split 50-50. And the fact that the entire force is covered in them just kind of makes that a horrifying endeavor. Get out of the way. So yeah, I don't know. I, I think I will go for two hours. Um, whether I find the results of every tree or not, screw it. I'm gonna just continue on because this is just a waste of time for everyone involved. It's just kind of baffling to see this sort of being a thing. I don't remember this being as obnoxious, but then again, I only did it once or twice and then decided I didn't want a level 10 monster. Alright. Let's go tree next to it. Hey! First try, we got a monster. Alrighty. Got ourselves a Spiro. Go get him, Omelette. I should swap omelette for salad, just so it gets some levels in. Pin missile! That's a bug move. It's not gonna be very effective, you silly omelette. Wing attack! I think that's one of the most powerful bird moves, too. I'm surprised that was standard damage. It didn't have like any sort of type resistance against it. That's a little weird. More bug moves! Maybe you'll get poisoned, I hope so. Nope. Let's roll that dice, omelette. Oh, that's a good move. Alright, razor leaf. Not very effective, but I like that move. That's one of the earliest, really fun grass moves. <laughs> Mega Drain! That's a good grass move, too. Alright, we'll swap Sin. Go get him, Cinder!
swap Salad in. Get a level for him. Oh, we got another one. Another bird. You know what's weird is they did say that monsters would be asleep when you knocked them out of the tree, but they're not. It's like they actively fed you misinformation from the start about this whole stupid endeavor. Hooray, salad leveled. Got another one. It's another bird. Hooray! You're still weak to him, Salad. So let's uh, let's pull you back. Try again. Nope, nothing. I wonder if it's like a timer type thing or if it's literally just random. Like you can only get a monster out from headbutting after a certain period of time or there's some sort of like way to manipulate the RNG so that you actually get a monster because this stupid message is pissing me off. Oh, here we go. What do we got? <laughs> Another bird! I mean, if nothing else, this is a textbook example of why grinding is bad. Because it's not entertaining in any way, shape, or form. I just want to catch a Heracross and a Pineco. Is that really too much to ask, world? Evidently so. Alright, script. One more monster, and then I'm uh, just gonna move on because this is just wasting my time. I have to get back to editing at some point. Nope, nothing. It's gonna be another Spiro. I can feel it. Uh, these trees are the worst thing ever. I mean, on the bright side, it, if nothing else, <laughs> this has allowed me to remember how terrible this is, although I don't remember it being so terrible. Spiro. Yep. Yeah. Okay, we're done. I'm just gonna run, screw it. Okay, so that has been, like, two hours of wasted time on the hunt for some rare bug monsters that we did not get. Hooray. Now this leaves us with an interesting quandary though, because we have to figure out what we're going to be using for the rest of this game. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not sure I really wanted to use bug monsters in the first place, but I want something. I mean, right now I'm training two other monsters just so I've got something, but I don't really like them all that much. I want something that I really want in particular. and. I mean, I guess this goes back to one of the problems that uh, Johto has with its exclusive monsters. It's like the really fun ones, like the Skarmories and the Gligers, don't show up until way late in the game. Hound Doom, I freaking love Hound Doom. You don't get that until after like you've beaten the game, kinda. You know, there's so much in this game that's really cool, but they kind of 
keep it away from like any point where you'd want to have it and only give it to you well after you've more or less gone past the point where it would have been useful to you. Yep, just gonna run from all the fights because I don't care anymore. I don't know if there are any trainers in here. I don't think there are. It's not like Viridian Forest. There's a much better forest. Full of marginally less stupid trees. Ether. Well, that's interesting. Pidgey! Such a cute little bird. I'm still gonna run from you, though. I'm done doing things. Oh, you are an actual trainer. Let's fight you, then. Are you getting monsters from trees? If you are, I am incredibly jealous. And I might burn you to the ground along with this stupid forest and these stupid trees. Lady buh. You can't get a lady buh from a tree, which is for the best, because ladybugs are stupid. Actually, I think, uh... No, I was trying to swap splash with tackle. Let's try this again. There we go. Now use tackle. You can't do anything to me, can you, ladybug? All you've got is your silly little supersonic. And a tackle. Okay, you can do something, but nothing impressive. No one's impressed here, Ladybug. Take your tricks and go home. Tricks are for kids, not people out for revenge. Paris. Where was that when I was trying to catch a Paris? So I could teach it cut. So I could get on with my life. Oh, you had it. All the more reason you need to go down with this stupid forest. You... Smelly bug catcher. The funny thing is, like, they seem to imply that he's trying to use headbutt on these trees, because he was facing a tree when we ran into him. But none of these monsters drop from trees, as far as I'm aware. Fine. I will swap omelet in. And omelet will use, like, flamethrower or something crazy. Actually did a little more than I thought Scratch would do. Flamethrower. Or you know that. That's good too. <laughs> That's a 1 in 30 chance, by the way. You just get me, don't you, Omelet? <laughs> now that said, Omelet does evolve by affection, so if I am going to be using it with my team, I might uh, also try and evolve it off screen. Yeah. Just using headbutts on trees. Don't bother. It's a trap. It's a giant waste of everyone's time. Have you not been watching the past hour? You stupid bug catcher. Of course you haven't. You're too busy being a bug catcher. I'd very much like to leave. Uh, there we go, the exit. Okay. Stupid Kakuna. What you got there, lady? TM12 makes Pokemon appear. That's actually kind of useful if you want to double your encounter rate. I don't really want to, but... Now this guy will fight us. Come on, guy. Samuel. With your Rattata that can never lower and cut because it's a waste of space. 
Oh, and I'm paralyzed. I should probably swap to omelet. And then, let's see if we can get another horn drill out of that. That'd be kind of amazing. Uh, it's the problems of using metronome. Randomness. Well, we already used Mega Drain, why not? Don't you feel silly, Rattata? You're just a giant HP pool for me to eat. Sunny day! It'd be great if I had Solar Beam, or like, Flamethrower, or Fire Blast, or anything of use. I've got Ember, I wonder if that would be affected. Good work, Omelette. Poison powder, yes please, salad, that sounds good. Let's get rid of Splash. <laughs> I mean, it's great as a taunt, but let's... Let's be real, we need some better moves. <laughs> Ah, uh, good old Sandshrew, a thing that actually does learn cut and is, like, the savior of playthroughs, evidently. Good on you for having one. Oop, well, it survive. Oh, not by much, though. And Encore, of course, means it'll do the same attack again. Which can be useful for doing some really dirty stuff, but... In a moment where that will murder you, it's not so great. I'm just gonna use Ember. Nope, we're good. Pharaoh. Burn, you stupid little winged rat. Sin hit level 26. Hope we don't run into many more people because I really don't want to run into more people. We ran into another person, by the way. <laughs> the thing about raising things at a daycare is you're not doing it, and they learn random stuff that you can't control. Or rather, they replace things that you really can't control much of. That is a really ugly monster, Snubble. Like, what is it supposed to be? Is it supposed to be like some kind of weird bulldog or something? But it has like bunny ears. And it looks like he's wearing a dress. Like, what is Snubble? Why does it wear a polka dot dress? Why does it have bunny ears? Many questions that will probably not be answered. But we've also been going for two hours and I'm running out of things to say. You're the best in your class of Pokemon. I don't know. Got me shaking in my boots here, kiddo. Ian. You're manky. That's probably why you're the best. You've got a fighting type. Everyone else is using, like, Rattatas or something. Clearly you're gonna be the best. Like some kind of Ian. Low kick. Those are illegal in fighting matches. You know that. Ugh. 
Okay, Sin. Nope. Don't care to swap. I'm already angry about the last two hours of hitting my face against a tree for no reason. I just want it to end. Preferably before the RF overheats and I lose all my save. That would suck. Alright, so here's the day here. Now, if I recall, I read that you can talk to this guy and he'll give you an egg for free, which is nice. And I don't know if that's true. If it is, I'll be doing that off screen, um, as well as possibly leveling my Togepi, mainly because it's an affection evolution and I don't want to deal with that on screen because that's a waste of time. Almost as much of a waste of time as ramming your head into a tree for two hours. Not that we'd know anyone who would ever do that. No, no, certainly not me. I'm too much on my edgy quest for revenge. But, uh... If you want to see more videos like this, but less of a giant waste of time, go check out my YouTube channel. It's the same as my Twitch channel. Um, follow my Twitch channel, subscribe to my YouTube. If you want to really want to help me out, uh, check out my Patreon. Help support that, get on the fan Discord, and help complain about how awful trees are forever. But, uh... Until next time, peace out, internet.